Fit Pro Nation, Trainer Tia coming to you with a really important video on how to set your calories and macros appropriately. So I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as I can. Um, I'm gonna take notes and I'm gonna hold things up for you. I highly recommend as you're watching this video also taking notes and maybe hitting pause and looking up your own numbers for the things that we're gonna be talking about and calculating these as we go. I'm gonna cater these numbers to gaining size, gaining muscle, to recomping, or to, to try to strike the fine balance between um, uh, losing some fat and gaining some muscle at the same time and trying to change your composition. And then lastly, trying to lose weight. Okay, so those three things, we're gonna talk about how to set your calories and macros. Please keep in mind that this is the kind of thing that I work with people for months in a one-on-one -on -one capacity on in a very personalized setting, okay? So this is a very general formula. Um, if you feel like you're lost on this or you feel like um, it, you need more attention or you need more help with it or you're just struggling to hit the numbers that I'm wanting you to hit, keep in mind, again, people work with me for months and years on this. So if it's tough, that's normal. Like it's, it's supposed to be tough. It's expected to be tough, okay? So um, calculating the numbers is step one, but then actually following the numbers and actually fitting that into your life is step two. I cannot emphasize that enough. Okay, and, and most importantly, be patient, right? A lot of, a lot of people are, are, are gonna be seeing this in my programs, in my short programs, four to six to eight weeks. Um, and, and you can't really do a lot in four to six to eight weeks unless you're very advanced and you've stacked up all the dominoes properly and you can just tip the dominoes and you have enough strength and you have enough muscle and you have enough metabolic health where your body's in a place to respond. And most people are not in that place, so keep that in mind. Um, so anyway, so, so it takes time, be patient. This can take months and years, especially if you have a history of an eating disorder or metabolic damage. Um, if you have a compromised metabolism from years of yo-yo dieting, years of restrictive dieting, eating disorders, um, disordered thoughts, uh, on again, off again type of dieting, it's gonna take months or years to reset your metabolism, okay? Months or years to reset your metabolism. Be patient, play the long game people come to me after they've been fucking around with their metabolism and fucking around with yo-yo dieting for years and they're like i'm in this hole and i can't seem to get out and it's like well you have to just be patient and you have to treat your body right in order to get it to respond okay so keep that in mind let's get to it okay so first and foremost the first thing that you need to calculate is your bmr bmr okay bmr is your base metabolic rate the base metabolic rate is the number of calories that you burn every day on a day-to-day -day basis with uh, no activity, okay? So it's basic brain functioning, cardiovascular functioning, muscle function, muscle repair, digestive processes, etc. So if you were awake, but laying in bed, not moving a muscle all day, that's your base metabolic rate, okay? It's based on your age, height, weight, and sex, okay? Age, height, weight, and sex. It does not take into account composition or genetic history. Really important distinctions, okay? So I want you to Google BMR calculator, put your information in, age, height, weight, sex. It will spit out a number. Most people are between, based on age, height, weight, and sex, between 1,200 and 2,000, depending on who I work with and how, how big you are, tall or, or with weight. And guys will have a higher BMR as well because of testosterone and muscle. So your BMR, base number of calories that you burn every single day at rest with no movement does not take into account composition or genetics. So for me, let's break that down. So I have a lot of muscle. So my composition is, is, is my age, height, and weight is not reflective of my composition. Muscle burns more calories. I'm gonna keep this video pretty fast, okay, pretty direct, so we can break this down more if we need to, or, or again, in a one-on-one -on -one capacity. But if you have more muscle, your metabolism is gonna be higher. That's why most of you are working with me. You want a, a better metabolism. You wanna burn more calories. You want to burn more fat. You want more dietary freedom, right? So muscle burns more calories. That's the point of why we lift, to build muscle, okay? So I have a higher muscle mass, so my BMR is gonna be way higher than what the calculator would spit out. If you also have a genetic predisposition to a higher or lower metabolism, it obviously doesn't take that into account. And I work with lots of people who have a slower metabolism or a lower BMR and a lower metabolic rate and people like me that have a higher metabolism. I was just born, I was born that way. And, and I've also worked on it tirelessly over the years. I've, I've, I've enhanced it, right? So, but I definitely have a fast metabolism by genetics. So you have to keep this in mind, okay? So this is again why like working one-on-one -on -one with me on nutrition is so important. There's so many distinctions here, okay? So, but your BMR in a, in a, a basic formulaic 
limited hypothesis is based on age, height, weight, and sex. Pause this, calculate it right now. Come back when you're ready. Once you have your BMR, so obviously you're doing more than just laying in bed all day. You're, you're up, you're moving, you're going to the grocery store, you're going to work, you're walking around with your friends, you're hitting the gym, of course, you're doing exercises, you might be doing cardio. And so then the next number we need to calculate is your T, D, E, E. Total daily energy expenditure. Total daily energy expenditure. So once, once you have your BMR, the TDEE, or estimated expenditure, I've heard it both ways, um, it, it is reflective, it is an estimate of how many calories you burn in total every day. So it's your BMR times your activity level. Okay, and we can get more advanced with this, like you could break it down into NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. You don't need to know that, okay? Most of my clients don't need to know that, but that stuff is out there if you wanted to be more precise. Most people that I work with are general population and they don't care about that, okay? So TDEE is, is, is your BMR times your activity level to find your calorie burn, right? Because calories are energy. Calories are just energy. So we want to strike the right balance of energy in, energy out. If you're taking more in than you're putting out, that's how you gain weight. If you're taking less in than you burn, then you're losing weight, hypothetically. It's a little more complicated, okay? So that's how the calorie balance, the energy balance works. And in my program, in my experience, thousands of clients over 10 years, lots of different types of people, lots of different types of goals. Calories are king. I don't give a shit who tells you that calories are not important. They are king. They are number one or queen if you want to be more proper um, cause, cause, cause women obviously run the world. Um, but I'm just kidding. So, but, but they are, they are number one calories. Number one, the most transformative part of your diet is calories more than macros, more than quality, more than timing, more than supplements, more than everything. You have to get the calories right. If you want to change your, change your size up or down, it's essential. Anybody that tells you that you can change your size without counting calories. I don't want to say they're wrong, but they're really imprecise. It's really, you're guessing, you're guessing. I don't like to waste time. I don't like to waste energy. I want to get there fast. Maybe you're the same. If you want to get there fast and you want to be precise, you have to count your calories. There's no way around it. Okay. So once you calculate your BMR, you're going to go Google Harris, H A R R I S Benedict equation, Harris Benedict equation. And if you go, if you land it on the website that I'm, that I usually use the first one that pops up with BMR calculator, it should be right there. So the Harris Benedict equation, it will pull up a table of activity levels and what the multipliers are. So sedentary is like multiply by 1.2. Lightly active is multiplied by I think 1.4 and then moderately active is multiplied by 1.6 and then so on and so forth. Extremely active is multiplied by I think 1.9. Most people that I work with, I multiply by about 1.5 and that usually gets us in the ballpark. Okay, so take your BMR, let's say it's 1400, multiply by 1 1.5 and that's gonna be 2100. Now, of course, if you're doing more than that, look at the table and m multiply accordingly. If you know you have a fast metabolism, add 0.1 to 0.3 onto that multiplier. If you know you have more muscle mass, add 0.1 to 0.3 or more to that multiplier. If you know you have a slow metabolism, subtract 0.1 to 0.3 to that multiplier, right? So, so these, this is again, where like having somebody to set your diet is essential. It's critical. Now I can't do that for everybody in this group program or, or in this general video, right? But if you want to do that with me one-on-one, -on -one, I highly recommend it. And it can be a moving target too, depending on what you're doing. Um, so we've set our TDEE. This is your break even point. Again, talking about like calories in calories out, that's your break even point. If you didn't want to change size, you, just, you didn't really want to do anything with your physique. You're just maintaining. That's your break even point, give or take. Now I recommend all calorie goals are plus or minus 100. Okay, so if it spits out, if the formula spits out like 1947, round it up to 2000. Okay, round it. Because you don't need to agonize over every single calorie. Round it up to the nearest 100. Okay, and, and that'll be in the ballpark. Life is bigger than 47 calories. It really is, and that's coming from the calorie queen. Okay. So if you want to stay the same, you want to hit that calorie balance. If you want to gain weight, if you're looking to build muscle, add 10% at a time to your TDEE. So in our example, if you're 2100, 
you would add 200 calories at a time. Try that for two to four weeks. If you're not seeing results, then increase another 10%, then increase another 10%, okay? Up to 30%. If you're not seeing results at 30%, something else is probably wrong. Um, the lifting isn't heavy enough or um, the activity isn't high enough or you're doing too much cardio or like there's something else that's confounding the equation. Okay, so 10%, so if you want to gain, start in 10% increments and give it two to four weeks before you change it again. And there's a lot more that goes into the equation. Again, this is why I have a job, right? There's the lifting, there's the stress, there's the cardio, there's the reps, there's the volume. There's a lot of things that can affect your ability to build muscle. But if you wanna gain on the food side, 10% up at a time, give it two to four weeks before you adjust again. If you want to lose weight, this is not recomping, but if you wanna lose, it's the opposite. You're gonna subtract 10% off your TDEE at a time. And again, giving it two to four weeks before you change it again. Now, all of that is assuming that you have a healthy metabolism and you had the consistency and that you've been doing the diet work before you try to lose weight. Nobody does that. Okay. So if you're watching this and you're like, you've never counted your calories before, you've never started before, I guarantee you're probably not eating enough. Most people, one out of 50 people that I work with come in as true overeaters. Okay. So you're probably not overeating. Um, calculating these numbers, track your food for a week and just see where you're coming in. I would bet money if you're watching this that you're coming in low. So then what do you do? I mean, you, you can drop it then 10% from where your current consistent intake is, assuming that you're consistent, first of all. Again, complicated as fuck. So if you, can, you cannot like navigate the diet by just watching this 15 minute video, okay? It's super complicated. Um, so just know that. That's why a lot of people don't get it right. So hit me up if you wanna to work together one-on-one. -on -one. But if you feel like you know what you're doing and you can roll with this and you have the consistency, then be my guest. Um, so assuming that you have that consistency and assuming that you were actually eating up to your TDEE, if that's not you, if, you, if, you're, if we calculated your TDEE at 2100 and you're coming in at 1400 and you're still not losing weight, that should be a red flag. And you need to watch my video on metabolic damage and you need to really chill out and get the calories up for a long time, months or years. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not a sugarcoating kind of trainer. I'm gonna tell you exactly how long it's gonna take. It's gonna take months or years to reset that metabolism and patience and you're not gonna lose weight in that, those months or years until you, you get your body back online. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm always gonna give it to you straight so that you can adjust your expectations properly. So if you're in one of my group programs and you wanna lose weight and your TDEE is 2100 or high and your current intake is 1400 or low, and you're not losing weight and you have a history of yo-yo dieting or you've never tracked your food before but you're an under eater, you have months or years of work to do before we can start losing. Accept it. Sorry, but I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna tell you exactly how it's gonna be. So, so start by watching my metabolic damage video. I'm not gonna go into that today, but it's a whole process for a lot of people. So there's that. If you have the consistency and you have been doing the work and your calories have been high enough and they were above your TDEE and now you wanna lose weight, great. Drop it down 10% from where your current intake was and that's where we're gonna put you for two to four weeks and then we'll fine tune it from there. Okay, so that's weight loss on the calories. Um, as far as recomping, recomping is somewhere in between maintaining and losing. Okay, it's, it's in between maintaining and losing. I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's fucking hard. Okay, so if that's what you wanna do, brace yourself for a game of precision and it's a slow one too. It's a very slow game. So recomp is more of a long-term strategy. It's more of a slow process like months or a year. Um, it requires a lot of precision. It requires very meticulous tracking. Um, it's, it's a hard one, right? Cause it's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to lose a little fat and gain a little muscle and not really change their size. Well, guess what? the harder thing that everybody wants is, is a lot harder. So just brace yourself for that. If you wanna recomp, again, assuming that your metabolism's online, that you've been consistent, that you can track your food, that all of those things are in place, not that you've been an under eater for many years. Because if you are, then you can't do this goal. Stop it right now. Recomp, you go 5% at a time. Give it four weeks at a time before you adjust. So if your TDEE is 2100, drop it down to 2000. 
5% at a time. Give it four weeks to see results. I don't recommend watching the scale on the recomp. I recommend tracking inches and taking pictures. I hardly ever recommend the scale. I don't like the scale. It fucks people up. I have a whole nother series on that. It's called playing the numbers game. Um, watch that. And, and for your mental health, stop relying on the scale. It's killing you. Pictures and inches are good. Okay, so if you want to recomp, that's how you do that. Now let's talk about macros really quickly. So for all of these goals, your ideal would be to have your protein in grams at your body weight or so. And again, there's so much that I can say here, like nutrition, we could talk about nutrition for like days and weeks on end. It's very complicated. It's literally my job, okay? So there's a lot to say here. But like, long story short, you want to get your protein up to your body weight in grams. So I'm 125, so I mean, I actually eat about 200 grams of protein when I'm on a heavy lifting program. I'm not right now because I'm doing Ironman triathlon and I'm talking really fast because I'm trying to get out of here and get this video done. Um, but, but your body weight in grams is, is the goal. Nobody does that when they start and you have to work your way up incrementally, but that's what I'm gonna recommend for you. So if you're 150 pounds, you want 150 grams of protein. If you're a 225 pound guy, 225 grams of protein at a minimum. If you wanna build muscle, I would recommend going to one and a half times. So I'm 125, I would go up to 185. That's about where I hang out. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different ideal protein number. Of course, that's something that we work together one-on-one -on, -one on, but one gram per pound of body weight. One gram per pound of body weight for all the goals, okay? If you are trying to gain weight, double your body weight to carbs. So two times carbohydrates on gaining muscle. So I'm 125, so I'd be going for at least 250 on carbs for gaining. If you want to lose, I'd recommend your body weight in carbohydrates. So if you're trying to lose, it's the same amount of carb and protein. Fill in the rest of your calories with fat essentially. The fat doesn't matter. Carbs and protein. Of course, the fat can matter, but let's be really honest. A lot of people can't even track their food for seven days, first of all. A lot of people can't even hit the protein for seven days, first of all, let alone control the carbs, okay? So we're going to keep it really simple. Um, if you are advanced and you can juggle the calories and all three macros, then we can talk about that down the road. That's more advanced and that will get you more results, but a lot of people can't do that. So don't even think about that right now, okay? One step at a time. The diet is very hard, it's very intricate, it's very complicated, it's way more involved than the exercise. Can't stress that enough, okay? Don't worry about the fats. Hit the, hit the, hit the tracking, hit the calories, then hit the protein, then think about the carbs after that. If you want to recomp, I would recommend definitely protein at body weight, and then re recomp carbs could be between, depending on the person, depending on the activity level, between one and two. So maybe we'll say one and a half times body weight on recomp. Here's the thing though. This is the last thing that I'm gonna say. And it, it, it's, just, it's like the common theme, okay? There's so many ways to slice and dice anybody's particular profile. If you're doing a fuck ton of cardio, like I'm doing Ironman Triathlon right now, if you're doing a fuck ton of cardio, you're gonna need a hell of a lot more carbs and it confounds the equation and these formulas don't apply. If you have an insane metabolism like I do, it, I eat way more than these, than these things prescribe, okay? On the other end of the spectrum, if you're doing no cardio or you have a very sedentary lifestyle outside of your workouts, that's gonna affect your numbers. If you have a very slow metabolism or you have a history of eating disorders or a history of metabolic damage, that's gonna skew your numbers and you may have to do less than what I'm saying. If your body doesn't the kind of body that likes a lot of protein and your, and your body fights that amount of protein and it can't do a gram per pound of body weight, then we have to adjust that and then adjust the three macros from there, right? So it's super complicated, you guys. But based on those three goals, find your, T, find your BMR, find your TDEE, take into account your composition or your genetics and adjust up or down slightly. Then what's your goal? Do you want to gain? Do you want to lose? Or do you want to recomp? Make sure that you've been consistent. Make sure that you've had months or years of consistent tracking, consistent intake, just consistency and knowledge before you start modifying things. Because if you start modifying things on a shaky foundation, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. 
if you've been in metabolic damage and you come in and you try to cut and you try to slash your calories, of course your body's not going to respond because it's, it's, it's offline largely. Okay. So that's my, that's my advice on where to set your calories and your macros and different goals. And, um, what I want everybody to do is I want you to, um, calculate those numbers for me. And I would love if you could put them in the Facebook group, um, on the, on, on, on the post that I'm going to make, I'm going to make a post about diet and actually it's going to be on this video since I'm posting this video. Um, I want you to tell me your BMR, your TDEE, what your goal is, what your metabolic history is in the last six to 12 months, and then what your propositions are for calories, carbs, and protein. Tell me those things. I will check them and I will help you because I want everybody to succeed. Just know what you're getting into. Know that the diet is complicated. Know that there's a lot of moving parts to it. Um, and it's going to take time and you're probably not going to nail it in the next six weeks. Okay. But you can at least get your foundation set. You can at least start and I can at least get you going in the right direction. Okay. So, all right. I, that was a lot of information. If anybody has any questions, please ask that here on the post or message me directly. I prefer on the post so that everybody can see the answer and then we can all learn together. Um, and I think that's it. This is way longer than I wanted it to be. And I need to go do the rest of my workouts. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Keep me posted on all the videos, all the things. Love you guys. Let me know what else you need. And I got you. Take care. Trainer Tia out.